Morning, Nick. Uh, welcome to the Human Performance Laboratory. Good morning. Uh, it's good to meet you at last. Um, in terms of um, what you'd like to get out of this, um, what, are, what are your objectives? Well, as you know, I'm planning on going to Everest in a year and a bit, year and a half's time. So there's a few things I need to work on. I mean, firstly, the, my general upper body strength. I think is a bit, um, bit weak at the moment. Uh, so I'd like to work on that. Um, but also the... Um, I think because of the high altitude, I've never worked at that sort of level before, so I need to work on my uh, aerobic and anaerobic fitness a bit more, and um, certainly uh, low oxygen levels. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think those are the main. Okay, main so main just concerns. just to summarise, um, you want to develop your upper body strength mm -hmm. to cope with the demands of of climbing uh, such a high altitude uh, at Everest mm -hmm. and um, to develop your muscles and cardiovascular system to cope with um, the low levels of oxygen also at, at that high altitude. Okay, yeah, yeah, that sounds fine. Well, the process will be that we'll, we'll make some assessments today uh, and then we'll provide you with a training regime um, mm -hmm. and then uh, a couple of months down the line we'll, we'll reassess uh, and then finally we should then be able to make some adjustments before your expedition. Okay, Nick, if you could come over and stand with your back to the stadiometer, please. During initial assessment and before any physical training, baseline measurements have to be made, such as height and weight. Okay, that's good. Look out straight in front. And if you could step forward, please. The ratio of weight in kilograms to height in meters squared gives the body mass index, BMI which indicates if the subject's weight is within a healthy range. OK, Nick, um, we need to get you set up for these uh, resting measurements. So the okay. first thing I'd like you to do is to put this heart rate monitor on. Uh, it needs to go just below your chest, um, in the middle, near the sternum, and it just straps on. That's good. OK, the next thing we need to put on is this mask. Um, this is going to be monitoring your respiration. So. Just pop that over your head. Okay, this involves essentially two components. This black piece here is a turbine which is going to be measuring the, the volume of your inhalation and exhalation. And uh, the other measurement that's being made is the concentration of the gases, um, carbon dioxide and oxygen, and how they change during inhalation and exhalation. Okay, so there seems to be a fixed, seems to be a good seal. Is it reasonably comfortable? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So if you could lie down now and uh, just relax, head back, that's good. So in the next five minutes um, we're going to be monitoring your respiration, your heart rate, at the end of the five minutes, I'm then going to be taking uh, a blood pressure measurement uh, from your left arm. Okay, but I'll let you know when that's happening. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, the pink line here represents uh, the breathing rate, so the number of breaths per minute um, that Nick was breathing during the resting period. Just below it is the tidal volume, the volume of air with each breath that um, Nick was breathing during the rest period. And then below it, the flow of air, uh, or the rate of flow of air, um, and all three are relatively constant and of a low value uh, during rest. If we go to the table below, we can see here the oxygen consumption, beside it the carbon dioxide production, and then R, which is the ratio of the oxygen consumption to the carbon dioxide production. The oxygen consumption is approximately 0.4 of a litre per minute and the CO2 or carbon dioxide production is less than that at 0 
liters per minute. And so the ratio of those two is 0 0.79, uh, and importantly, during rest, is less than 1. OK, Nick, we're coming towards the end of the five-minute resting period. So the next thing we need to do is just make a blood pressure measurement. So if you could just put out your left arm, that's great. Thank you very much. And we'll just... Blood pressure is an important measurement that can assess the fitness of the heart and blood vessels. Carl fixes the cuff around the arm and inflates it. This squeezes the artery to the extent that it prevents blood flow. As the cuff pressure is reduced, a series of sounds of the return of blood flow in the artery can be heard. Systolic pressure at about 115. And diastolic at about 75. Okay, that's good. Thank you very much. That's now the end of our resting measurements. So uh, we'll be moving on to the body composition next. Okay. Two levels of X-ray are fired, at very low dosage, across the whole length and width of the body. The radiation coming through shows different densities of tissue, indicating lean tissue, fat and bone. OK, so from the scan we can now see Nick's skeleton. We're just going to redraw so that we can see all of the tissues. And now perform an analysis of those tissues to see the distribution of fat, and the distribution of lean tissue, which is predominantly muscle. And we can observe the adaptations of Nick's musculoskeletal system to his training. OK, Nick, uh, we're about to start the exercise test. Mm -hmm. So in a moment, I'll start the treadmill and try and get your balance as quickly as possible. Uh, try not to hold on to the sides where, where you can. But if you feel you're going to mm -hmm. come off, do try and use, use the arms. Um, it'll be progressively uh, increasing in speed, three okay. minute stages. Uh, and if you can either use one of these buttons to stop the treadmill uh, when you feel you can't go any further, or if you give me a signal, I'll slow the treadmill down. Yeah. OK, yeah. so we'll start the treadmill now. This will be the equivalent of a, of a light jog. Which is just nine kilometers an hour. Okay, now coming towards the end of the first stage. So the treadmill speed is going to increase and it's going to be somewhat harder. Again, try to maintain your balance throughout. Approaching the end of the second stage. So the treadmill speed is going to increase further. Okay, that's full speed. That's good stuff, Nick. Keep it going. Doing really well. Well done, mate. That's an excellent test. Feeling okay? Okay. <laughs> we'll just do a, a slight warm down. So just get you walking again. Just let your breathing and heart rate come down a little bit. Okay, well done. That's the end of your exercise test. So if we look at the trace now during the exercise test, we can see that each of the variables progressively increases 
towards a peak or a maximum at the end of the exercise test. So the volume in each breath is increasing progressively and reaching a peak. The frequency or the rate of breaths being taken is reaching a peak. And the flow of the air through the, the mouthpiece is again reaching a peak towards the end of the test. If we go down now to the table, we can look at the oxygen uptake is more than three times what it was at rest. And importantly, the carbon dioxide production is greater now than that of the oxygen uptake, which gives us a ratio or quotient, respiratory quotient, that is greater than one. And this is one of the factors with which we use to determine that we have achieved a maximal exercise test.